Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will actually start to implement our Rune database that I talked about in the last video where I showed you the ER model. So we will now take that ER model and just implement it into a real database here in our Android app. And because we need to treat each type of relationship we can have in our database in a different way, I want to start with the most simple type here which are one-to-one -one relationships. So in our case, that was the table from school and the director's table. So each school only has one director and each director only leads one school. So make sure to go into an empty Android Studio project here. And I've already included the dependencies we need here. So on the one hand, of course, for the room library, for coroutines in combination with room, and of course the, the coroutine dependencies in general. You can find all these dependencies from the GitHub repository. Um, the link you will find in this video's description. And also don't forget to add this Kotlin cap plugin up here, or you can just pull my whole repository there. If you've done that, we want to create a new class here. So I will actually first create a package here for all of our entities. So. Remember, each entity is a table in our database. And in here, we will create a new Kotlin file class. And let's start with our director table. So we call that director and select class. So what do we actually need to do for each entity we have in a room database? We first need to make this class a data class. So each entity, each table in our app must be a data class here in Kotlin. And we also want to annotate that with add entity. Entity, you can see that is an annotation that comes from room. And by default, room will give this table the exact same name as the class has. So if you actually want to change that name, then you can specify that in parentheses here by using the table name property. And you could give this whatever director table as a name, but I'm not going to do that because I think it's a pretty good convention to leave these names as they are. We can remove these curly brackets and open parentheses here. So if we take a look back at our ER model, then our director's table actually only has a single attribute, which is its primary key, the director name. So we specify that val director name which is of course a string. And now because that is a primary key that is unique for each director here in this table, we annotate that with add primary key. And by default, Room will try to auto-generate that primary key so that we don't need to set it for each entity or actually for each row, for each entry we have in our director table. But for strings, it actually won't do that. And also it shouldn't do it here because we of course want to give these directors real names and not just random IDs. So to actually prevent Room from trying to auto-generate that primary key, we can specify auto-generate and set it to false here. Now that's it already for this director entity. Now let's do the same for our school entity, our school table. For that I just want to copy this entity class here, paste it in the same package and call it school. So this school class will of course also be a data class, also be an entity, and it will also have a primary key with auto-generate set to false. We just want to change the primary, um, the primary key name to school name this time. So now we define both of our tables that we actually want to have here in this tutorial. But we didn't really define the relation between these two tables. So how can we actually do that? For that I want to create a new package here in our entities package called relations and in that relations package we will now specify kind of a helper class um, for room to actually tell room how these two entities, how these two tables, our school table and our director's table actually work together. So we specify a Kotlin class here called school and director so that is kind of the convention if you have one to one relationships that you just have the first table name and the second table name. 
You could also specify the other way around here, director and school, because this is a one-to-one -one relationship here. So it doesn't really matter if we put the director's name in the school table or the school name in the director table. So that is that doesn't matter here. But I just decide to do it this way. I'll select class here and this will also be a data class. But this won't be an entity here. So remember, in the last video where we defined that one-to-one -one relationship, we had that diamond shape and we basically resolve this relationship by putting the school name into the director's table. And then this diamond shape, that relation, didn't really need an extra table. If we would have an n to m relationship here, which we don't have, then this would need an extra table and then we would need to annotate that with add entity. But more to that when we actually implement the relation between subject and student. Right now we only have that simple one-to-one -one relationship and when we have such a relationship here that is called school and director or anything and another anything, <laughs> then we actually want to first have have an instance here in this relation class that references the first class here, so school, val school, and this time this is of type school here. So room will recognize that and it will in include the fields we have in school. So in our school class we have the school name and it will automatically include those fields here in this class, but only if we annotate that with add embedded. So that will just make sure that the fields, all the fields we have in that school class will be kind of inserted into this class, but, but only internally for room. And we can treat this school object just as a normal school class here. So that's the first part of this relation. The second part is of course our director. So we will also have a val director of type director here. And this, this time we don't annotate this with embedded, Instead, we now need to tell Room that this is actually our kind of our relationship object here. So you will see what I mean. We annotate this with add relation. We open parentheses here. And now we need to specify two attributes here. On the one hand, that is parent column, which refers to the entry of the parent column. So this is the first uh, the first entity here, our school, it refers to the column, it should actually combine those two tables. So these two tables essentially need to have a property in common so that Room somehow can um, compare these tables and actually see which entries of these two tables belong together. So it can just combine these in our queries later on. In SQL that is just called joining. So the parent column is just our school name here because both in our school table and in our director table we will have that school name property and we just specify that as a string here. And we'll make sure to write it the exact same way. And now the other attribute we need here is called entity column. So that is the column that is not a primary key but that is kind of compared to this column that is a primary key. And for this entity column we essentially also have the school name which we want to save in our director table, but right now we don't do that. So right now is actually the, the latest time we can actually change that and go to our director table and also include a school name property. And I essentially also um, explained that in the last video where we just added this school name property to the director entity. So here we will just also have a val school name of type string and that is not a primary key here because that is only used to save the school name this director is actually in and it's just helpful for room to check which directors have the school names of which schools so room can join these behind the scenes for us. So back here in our school and director table we also want to reference the school name here as an entity column. So this parent column refers to the parent entity or a school so to this property and the entity column refers to the director here, so to this column. And that's now it. Um, to actually show you how we can query this now with this helper class here, 
we want to specify a so-called DAO object here. That stands for data access object, and that is just an interface in which we define the functions, how we actually want to access our database here. So I will call this school DAO and select interface here. We need to annotate this with add DAO. And in here, we first want to have two functions to actually insert new schools and insert new directors. Those will be suspend functions because they are executed on a background thread because each database operation should actually be executed in the background to not block the main thread. And I'll just call this insert school. We pass a school we want to insert here and we annotate this with add insert and room will do the rest for us. I also want to pass a so-called on conflict strategy. So if we want to insert a school that already exists in our database, then I just want to replace that school with the new one. Oops. On conflict strategy replace. Then we can copy this function and rename this to insert director this to director and this to the director's class. And let's say we now want to define a query that just returns all schools and directors that have a specific school name. So we want to say we want to get the, the school classes and the director classes of all schools with the name Kotlin school, for example. Then we want to make this a suspend function, get school and director with a school name, for example. Here we pass the school name as a parameter. And that will now return a list of our helper class, so of school and director. And remember, this helper class contains both entities, our school entity and our director entity. And we can also refer to both of these entities here in this result list. So that is really cool here with Room, that it just does all the stuff behind the scenes for us. But we need to annotate this function with add query to just specify a custom SQL query we want room to execute here. And I won't go too deep here into SQL. We just want to select everything from our school table where the school name, so that is now the, the column of our school table, is equal to the school name we pass as a parameter. And to refer to the parameter, we just um, start this with a colon here. So colon school name. So we get all the entries from the school table where the school name is equal to the school name we passed here. And since Room now needs to execute multiple queries here for that, because we basically join these two tables here, our school and director table, it could be that there are some multi-threading issues. So it could be that Room executed the first query it needed, and in between, another query just changed our database, but Room really doesn't know that, and this can really lead to some issues here. And to make sure it that this is basically a thread-safe operation here, we also want to annotate this function with add transaction. So that will just make sure that there can't be any multi-threading issues here with this function. If we wouldn't join any tables here, if we would just query the schools table, for example, and return a list of schools, then we wouldn't need to add this transaction annotation. But this way, we need to do this. So that's how you can essentially manage one-to-one -one relationships in a room database. We cannot test this right now because we haven't specified our database class, which I will do at the end of this playlist. In the next two videos, we will first worry about one-to-n relationships and n-to-n and uh, to m relationships, and then we will implement the database class and just test what we did in this playlist. So I hope you really liked this video. If so, tell me that below and leave me a subscribe. That would make me really happy. And also, if you're looking for more advanced tutorials regarding Android, check out the first link in this video's description. You will get to my website where you will find premium courses such as a Cato course for Kotlin backends or a Firebase social network. Just check it out and with the discount code philip 15 you will save 15% on those courses.
I wish you a very nice day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.